Yes. Yes. All right. We all know the infamous story back when Tenant came out, you know, how, uh, oh, what was it? How they didn't want to delay it. They just want to release it right then and then. And Christopher Nolan didn't agree. Was that the, was just, the other way around? Oh, the way around. Um, oh, no, Nolan wanted it to be delayed. No, Nolan wanted it released. Oh, did they? Yeah, yeah. Warner Brothers wanted to delay it because it's a high budget movie and pandemic and stuff like that. That was fine. That was all good. Um, but I think Nolan officially wanted to walk away from Warner Brothers when they announced. Remember that? Oh, they released yes. on their platform yeah, the at the HBO. same day. Yeah, yes. for the entirety of 2022 last yeah. year. No, twenty one was the year Suicide Squad came out. Yes, yes, yes. 21. Sorry, yes. That, that's yeah. the one. Yeah, I remember that now. Uh-huh. Yeah. So obviously Nolan didn't like this strategy. Yep. Um, from Warner Brothers. Um, so he obviously went off to Universal, where he's making Oppenheimer. It's going to make them a lot of money. Um, so now Warner Brothers wants Christopher Nolan to come back to the studio, and he's even invited him to the lot. And um. Reportedly, he's been paid a seven-figure bonus for Tenant as a sign of good faith. Um, who know Nolan? I don't think no. I haven't seen anything when Nolan's commented on this news or anything. Um, so I don't know if it's either reached him or what. Um, but would you like to see Nolan return back to his old stomping ground? Um, do you think he should? No, I don't. I don't think he should. Like, what, what's the point? Like, yeah. we went through all of this. Um, what what can they offer him that Universal isn't offering him? He got a hundred million dollar budget movie for Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer. Yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> it's not really a massive high budget kind of story to tell. No, obviously no one will find a way. Um, what else did he get? Three weeks IMAX I- exclusivity. Warner Brothers would give that to him. They'd probably try off a four weeks or something like that. Tom Cruise is salty. Yep. Um, over a hundred million dollar budget and marketing for Oppenheimer. Not to mention it's three hours. Mm-hmm. It's R rated. Yep. Universal is allowing all of that. Oh, and he can do black and white segments in it. Reinvent new technology for IMAX. What can they offer? I know they want him because he is he's a good box office machine. Um for original films, for great films. Um, so I, I get the reasoning behind Warner Brothers in this. In terms of Nolan, Universal's your new home, I think just write it out, see what happens. I think whatever happens with that, there's always a home for Christopher Nolan in terms of where he makes his movies. I think, and I'm saying this as a very big Chris Nolan fan, he has way too much power. <laughs> like to command this kind of stuff, I think is absolutely insane would you say he's the most powerful person in hollywood now not not person in hollywood director yeah i I think he's above scorsese who would be the next one i mean he can command 200 million dollar budgets for some streaming service (laughs) i I, they would do that for nolan absolutely but he wants to make studio cinema imax kind of movies yeah i i don't have much to say other than you know um he shouldn't go back because he disagreed with their approach. They were wrong in their approach. I think we've seen that. I think, um, you know, I think we're just seeing it all over the place. Something like Spider-Verse, I think is a good demonstration on how a studio handles the pandemic. And I'll elaborate on that because they came out. Pardon? And Paramount. And Par- yeah, both of them did well. But Sony in particular, Paramount has Paramount Plus. Sony has no streaming service. They dropped Spider-Verse on Netflix. And that's dominated the Netflix charts. Everyone can just watch it. Cause... Is that into Spider-Verse? Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so when the sequel comes out, everyone's going to go see it. Because they've seen the first one on Netflix. Yep. Yeah. And then if you're going to have something like Paramount+, Plus, Max, Disney+, Plus, they don't have much subscribers. I guess Disney+, Plus can be excluded because it does have a lot. But all these other, like Peacock for Universal, like, yeah, you, you know, you're not going to get good traction for your um, next one. And then Sony committed to theater exclusive releases in 2021. Paramount did that for 22. They held out on Top Gun Maverick. And they knew everything that about that movie that we didn't and that it was, you know, in fact, a masterpiece and mm-hmm. deserved the wait. Um, so, 
yeah, I think just stick with that. If you didn't agree with what they did or what they are, stay, stick with that because, you know, yeah, they, you know, it's just common sense in my opinion. Yeah, they are still like that as a company. If there was another pandemic to hit, they'd probably do the same thing. So pretty much stick with the ones that you chose initially. The ones that are truly loyal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I see that as well. I mean, obviously Warner Brothers has seen how great um, Oppenheimer is looking right mm-hmm. now, you know, and how well it's going to track and the fact that they're not budging away from a Barbie movie as well. Um, yeah. Obviously, they're getting jealous and mm-hmm. whatnot and they, you know, they want their boy back because he made so many films. He made the whole Dark Knight trilogy, Inception, Interstellar, Dunkirk, yeah. Tenant as well. Um, so they just want him back on his books because it's obviously he makes decent. He's consistent in his box office. Like mm-hmm. whenever there's an Nolan film, you know exactly how much he's going to make. Yeah. Um, and that's just something that's not certain for Warner Brothers right now. Their superhero franchise is flopping hard. Um, so they they are okay. losing a lot of money. So they want Nolan to come back. In my opinion, mm-hmm. they want Nolan to come back just because they know, like, oh yes, yeah. if we release a Nolan film, we're going to get this amount at the box office. Exactly. Anything more awesome. Yeah. But yeah, that one brothers right now is just failure after failure. Their Harry Potter franchise is failing. Yeah. With Fantastic Beasts. Yeah. Um, they have a, they have an, and obviously we've talked about, it, they've announced a TV series now that could potentially fail as well. Yeah. So there's nothing one brothers has that is a certain guarantee, except mm. for maybe like their smaller unknown stuff. Um, yeah. Just talking about franchise wise. Mm-hmm. So maybe this is a desperate p- plea for him to come back. Yeah. In terms of that seven figure bonus that they paid him for, Tenant yeah. clearly shows that they are super desperate. Um, but yeah. yeah, you pretty much said everything. I think I've said everything I could about this. Um, I think Nolan should stick with the studios that just let him have complete freedom mm-hmm. and, you know, just you do what you want. Here's your money. Yeah, pretty much. Um, in fact, Universal is going to benefit from Warner Brothers because they built this director up so well mm-hmm. in terms of, you know, yeah. his legacy and whatnot. Now another entire studio is going to benefit because they know like, oh, thanks for making this guy like, you know, mm. a 700 to 800 plus sort of box office hit. Yeah, I'm going to give him everything he wants mm-hmm. and we can potentially hit him into the billion mark. Yeah, yeah. It's funny. We, we talk about um, Nolan like he's an NBA player. Um, just getting <laughs> not not traded, but he enters free agency and can sign with another studio. It's it's really bizarre because we don't talk about any other directors like, like this. That. Yeah, it, it's really only him, and I think that's a surprising amount of power. I think the only mm. one would be Vinaloo because I I don't think he's been with another studio. I I could be wrong. He's just Warner Brothers. But if he was like, oh, I might move, and then you know? all these other studios make offers, and he just chooses the one that he thinks is best for him. Yeah. Uh, he could command something like that for sure. I think because yeah. every director, they just want to make a project, so they go to different studios. No one's quite loyal to one studio. Yeah. I think obviously Van Lube was, and Nolan once was. It's because well. I think Warner Brothers gives them, gave them what they wanted at the time and what they needed, so they just stick with it, Yeah, I guess, which is probably for the best. In, in this case, do you think um, Nolan leaving was a... A bad decision, not 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 bad decision on on his part, but like, do you think it was kind of like a a selfless decision because the the decision they made to release everything day and date with their um streaming platform in twenty twenty one had nothing to do with him. Yeah, do you think it was a bit like self centered or s- selfish for him to leave because of that? I think it's a bit of both. I mean, obviously, um, he saw the. When that got announced, he saw these directors whose films were part of that, mm-hmm. like being affected, and obviously because he's a director, he can resonate with them. Yeah. Um. And so obviously he questioned that, but then from Warner Brothers' side, we're on a pandemic, you know, mm-hmm. like obviously they need to make more money to make more movies for us. Yeah. That, you know that's that's reason why this podcast exists. Mm-hmm. Is reason why cinemas exist. Yeah. Um. It's all for us at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Um. If that didn't happen, then obviously the quality of this still well. The quote of this stuff is bad, but you get what, you get what I'm trying to say here. I hope yeah. um, you know, like that they're just trying to do the best they could in that situation at that current point in time, which mm-hmm. is where they couldn't release a film out in theaters because yeah. no one was allowed to go see it. So they decided to do it both at the same time. You know, the people that are 
were more comfortable to go out into that sort of environment at that time. Mm. They could go watch it on a big screen. The people that weren't that comfortable could watch it at home in safety. Yeah. Um, and obviously it didn't stick. It was just a one-year thing. Mm-hmm. So it's it's more of like a, you know, it's fine. Who cares? Yeah. Because you know, 2022, they committed to a full theatrical Yeah, release. and then look at things now, you know? Yeah, yeah. it's back to normal. Mm-hmm. Um, Christopher Nolan, I can understand that. You know, he's got the director's back, you know, and yeah. if he were to announce a movie for that year, you know, he he probably would have had that feels like, oh, shit, I don't want my stuff to come out at the same time because yeah. my films are for the theater. And yep. obviously it is. Yeah. Um. So understandably for his part, um, I'm glad that he moved because obviously he's reinventing things for IMAX, you yep. know, that whole thing. Exactly. Um. And I don't think any other director would except for maybe James Cameron. He's done that with 3D and visual effects. Mm-hmm. He's that guy. No yeah. one's the IMAX guy, yeah. clearly. Mm-hmm. So definitely, I think it's a win-lose yeah. <laughs> situation here. Well, well, well spoken. 